Hi everyone, I'm Jakob Horowitz and uh, in order to introduce you to our Bright Beginnings Gemara workbook series, I'm going to do a simple taste test. I'm going to teach you the beginning of a new topic of Gemara in El Metzias, uh, which is called Yish Shalom Yidash, that's the name of the topic. I'm going to teach it without any aids, in other words, reading from the Gemara. And then I'm going to show you how our workbook does it, and you can decide for yourself if it has value to a beginner learner, let alone um, someone who is familiar with Gemara. Okay, so just a little bit of background information which any Rebbe would give their students. So there's a basic uh, uh, rule called uh, a body of knowledge, a group of halachas called the laws of metzia, of found object. Matza means to find, or metzia is an object that's found. So this, this is the discussion about lost objects. Um, and if there is no simon, that's another word, a simon is an identifying sign. Um, if there's an object that has no identifying sign on it, that it belongs to a particular person, uh, then we a person may keep it if the owner gave up hope. So. So simply stated, if somebody uh, leaves something in a park, leaves a, a, a bag of nash in a park, and 10 minutes later realizes that he lost it, and he says, ah, I'm never going to find it again. And then after a half hour later, if you find it, you're allowed to keep it because the owner was Miyayish. And the words in the Gemara, you can look at uh, the sheet uh, that's attached with the, with the words of the Gemara. The Gemara says, Itmar, it was said, Yish Shalomidas. Now this means uh, what happens if someone gave up hope uh, or would have given up hope uh, but he didn't know that the object was lost. So the, the classic translation would be Yish Shalomidas. Somebody loses something but the owner actually did not know that it was lost by the time the person picked it up. So that would mean uh, if someone drops, it, let's go back to our example, a guy left a bag of nash in the park, um, someone came 10 minutes later and picked it up, however, the owner didn't find out that it was missing until they got home. So if the person would have known, they would have given up hope, it would have been, but the person didn't know. So there's a dispute between two great sages of the Talmud, Abaya and Rava, and here's the words that a child would learn the first day they were going over this topic. So Itmar, it was said, I'm reading from the Gemara, Yish Shalom Das. What happens if somebody gave up hope, but he didn't have knowledge that that it was lost? Abaya Amar Abaya says, Lehavi Yish. It is not considered as if he had given up hope, because he didn't know that it was lost. Rava Amar Havi Yish. Rava says that it is considered Yish, even though he didn't know about it, because we assume if the person would have known that it was lost, he would have given up hope. So we sort of uh, project the reality of what, what it would be, even though he didn't know about it. So that's the Gemara's, these are the words of the Gemara. Now, um, just to walk you through these, these sheets, there are two pages on, this is Shia Zion in this series. So if you look at the this Gemara, um, you can find this sheet that I'm, gave some words there, 7-1, it means that it's the first um, shear on, uh, the first page of Shear Zion. You can read through the introduction. And this actually refers to something you wrote in the, uh, in the introductory section of the book. We already introduced the children to this. And there, therefore, you know, they would have this knowledge base already. And here we actually have a diagram, a timeline that will help uh, students walk through this. And in other words, this shows uh, the, the, the chronological development of this, where the kid was in the park and he dropped his, bag, his item over here. Um, and then later on in the day, the guy picks it up and the owner didn't realize that it was lost until he came on the bus later on. So this is just a timeline on page two of the share that will help students uh, visualize that uh, sequence of events. Now here in the bottom, we have uh, the text, the way we present it in our book, 
uh, which is a supplement to Gemara. We don't want to replace the Gemara, but it's a supplement to the Gemara. You can see there that it starts with, um, we, we have the word uh, memra, which means a statement. Uh, tomorrow, uh, next class, we'll, I'll go through the various logical components of Gemara. Um, so it starts with a statement, and then it says uh, on top, um, reading your way through the text. Now, one of the things about Gemara is that we often um, have what I call whispers, as if somebody's whispering in your ear, because the Gemara itself um, lists, writes words, but the background information that you need to know. And just like the art scroll Gemara that does, we weave this knowledge into uh, the into the translation text by uh, putting brackets around them. So the words without brackets um, are the actual translation of the text as it's found in Gemara, and the brackets help provide context by helping them walk through the topic. Okay, so reading this, this sheet, Itmar, it was said, Yish Shalamidas, giving up hope without knowledge. Okay, that's without brackets. In brackets it says that the object is missing. Abaya Amara translation is Abaya said, Lai Yish, it's not giving up hope. That's the literal translation. Okay, it's not giving up hope. But read with the brackets, it's not bracket, open bracket, considered that the owner is close bracket, giving up hope open bracket, and the finder may not keep it, close bracket. Okay, so loy have a yish, literally in Gemara, uh, translation means it's not considered yish, but this provides the background information. The Rava Amen, Rava says, have a yish, it is open bracket, considered that the owner is close bracket, giving up hope, open bracket, and the finder may keep it, close bracket. Now, um, if you uh, follow, the, are, there are um, different these are worksheets, and they have different skills to them. One of the things that I found extraordinarily helpful as an eighth grade Rebbe of Gemara was that um, very often the children would uh, do poorly on tests. Kids who were struggling with Gemara, most of the years I taught the weaker track of the school, uh, the kids who were struggling in Gemara uh, very often did poorly on the tests, but the tests were not diagnostic because it bunched together all the different skills that the children needed to do in order to make get Gemara. Um, you know, translating the words, um, understanding the logical flow, the components that make up the, the give and take of Gemara, we call it Shakla Vitaria, and um, just a, a Q&A in terms of understanding the the actual words of Gemara, or asking for comprehension, we would call it. So what we did in this, uh, Rabbi Spivak did in this amazing workbook, is we separated the different types of skills. This is translation. Here you can see uh, putting it all together that goes on the uh, on the knowledge base. And 7.2 has other types of skills. We'll go over it in a different lesson. Okay, hope you found this of interest and helpful to be continued. Thank you for listening.